as many across our industry cope with furloughs, layoffs, and uncertainty in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, how can business aviation professionals prepare for the next step? From the National Business Aviation Association, this is Flight Plan. I'm Rob Finfrock with your trusted source for business aviation news. NBAA surveys have shown that job security is among the top concerns right now for business aviation professionals, and with good reason, as it's difficult to find a company or organization in our industry that hasn't been affected by the COVID-19 crisis. How can you best position yourself when looking for your next job, or if you just want to ensure you keep putting your best foot forward in your workplace now? Joining us to help answer those questions are Cheryl Barden, President and CEO of Aviation Personnel International, and Jennifer Guthrie, Founder and CEO of In-Flight Crew Connections. Both Jennifer and Cheryl have extensive experience in advising business aviation professionals on the next step or steps in their careers. Cheryl, what are you hearing from those reaching out to your company about this current employment environment, and what's their top concern? Rob, thanks for having me today. I really appreciate it. So um, I think the, one of the number one concerns is when are we going to be able to get back to flying? And what is that going to look like, especially in regards to flying internationally? Um, I think that those who are still employed and most of our uh Corporate Part 91 flight departments are all still employed. They are anxious to get back to work. And and what is it going to look like? And are we going to be used robustly? And many believe that they will be. Those pilots who have been furloughed from charter operators, from some of the OEMs, they're also very interested to see what's going to happen as soon as we get back to flying, because there's a great belief that business flying is going to be uh, very robust once uh, things open back up again. Is that also what you're hearing from clients at your company, Jennifer? Yeah, we we work with a lot of contract crew members and with our clients. And I think the number one concern for our crew members is are the policies and the conditions of what they're going to go back to work in. And knowing what the protocols and the stipulations and will we shake hands or bow? Um, You know, what's the new protocol? They're concerned about who's going to provide the protective uh, PPE masks and gloves and all of that, whether they need to be prepared to do that themselves. Uh, And they're concerned about, you know, positioning with, because we position a lot of crews around the world and, how are are they going to be able to? And, you know, we're hearing a lot of different stories about crew members that are international having to stay in their hotel rooms and getting uh, tested for the virus, doing the nasal testing. And there's a lot of different, you know, concerns like that, I think. From our clients, I think what they're focusing on right now is uh, being prepared for the return and implementing what policies they're going to have for their operations. So I think that's kind of what they're doing right now. That's a great point, Jennifer. This really is about more than simply retaining our jobs or finding a new one. We must also consider what the job environment is going to look like going forward. As many in our industry grapple with these questions, where should they begin when planning for their next step? Well, some of it is just kind of common sense. It's, um, you know, update your resume, update your LinkedIn profile, Um, I think it's important to reach out to the various staffing, uh, aviation staffing companies and recruiters like myself and Cheryl. Watch the job boards, network with your friends. I mean, most of our people and most of us in the business aviation did this about, you know, eight to 10 years ago. So it's not that far from when we had a crisis, an employment crisis in the past. Um, I think, you know, also there's probably going to be an uptick in 135 operations and traffic. I think that more people that have the ability are going to fly charter instead of using the airlines. And so 
I think where smaller cabin charters may become more popular. And I think, you know, keeping an open mind as to what you might fly in the future. And then, you know, I think that this is a, an ideal time to learn something new and improve your own skill set, whether that's adding additional training to, you know, your CAM, whatever it is. But I think, you know, always looking for a way to diversify your resume and your experience level. Cheryl, what are your top three recommendations for those who have either been furloughed or laid off in this environment? The first thing I tell anyone when they have heard the news that they have lost their job, whether it's permanently or in a furlough, is just take a step back, take a breath. And, and even start the process of grieving. There, there's the, Really, this is such an unprecedented time. And when you've lost your job and, and you've loved your job, it's like losing a, a loved one. And you need to grieve that and take some time with it. Uh, I think the other thing is I always tell people, you only have one opportunity to make a first impression. And in doing that, you really need to manage your communications. And again, not make any sort of a knee-jerk reaction. I think when you, so many people are very, very uh, tied into their network through social media, my admonition would be, be very careful about what and how you post about the change to your employment status on social media and make sure that you do it in a respectful way and never um, in a way that might disparage who you worked for. Whatever you post never goes away. And so I think managing that communication, uh, not throwing together a resume quickly and plastering it out all over the internet, but really putting together a very good, compelling package and managing your communications strategically. I think the other thing that's very important is to spend some time getting your financial house in order. Apply for unemployment. Make sure you understand what your income is going to be for the next couple of months where uh, you might need to make uh, some cuts, but understand where you are and have your financial house in order so that you can manage through this period of time. Jennifer, those who have retained their positions during this crisis are probably on edge a bit themselves. How might they put their best foot forward in demonstrating their importance and value to their employer? Sure. And again, I think some of this advice that I have is just more common sense is just Continue to ask to contribute, uh, to support the leadership, to serve with your heart and create value for your flight department. Be the hard person to let go in the team. Uh, Continue to learn and grow, you know, by diversifying your skills and knowledge within a flight department and how it runs and operates. There's going to be changes to SOPs and to improve safety, not only for COVID and beyond as it relates to, you know, these type of transmittable diseases, I think. And, you know, just stay the course and hang in there because, I mean, I think we all believe that things are going to get better and that uh, our industry is going to thrive post-COVID. What about compensation? I know many in our industry are facing reduced hours right now and even reductions in pay to help their companies manage the bottom line during this crisis. I think that we're going to see it just kind of plateau for a while until this stabilizes. Um, I don't see the escalating of salaries that we were seeing pre-COVID happening at least for a little while because we're having the people who left business aviation to go to commercial. They're probably all going to want to get back in line in business aviation because I think our recovery is going to happen a lot quicker. So we may have an influx of supply um, where we we didn't have that. So I don't see them decreasing, but I don't see them escalating like they were, at least for a little while. Cheryl, what do you think? Well, I would say the first thing is to stay very engaged, continue to have communication and stay very engaged 
and very passionate about what you're doing. I think when organizations are having to make hard decisions, things that really do stand out is engagement and passion for the job and for the organization. But I think one of the the real things that uh, this kind of a time allows is for innovation. And out of out of crisis, a lot of times comes some great innovation. And I think for those who are in, who are still on the team, trying to find new ways to do things, new ways to provide value, and if you can do that through innovation, there's a lot of opportunity. Are you seeing an increase in job seekers looking to contract positions, at least in the short term? Well, I think in um, in in business aviation. Contracting is always a wonderful opportunity for those who have uh, lost their jobs either temporarily or permanently. And so, yes, I would see that any anybody is going to say, um, I'm available for contracting. I'm also available for full-time employment. I also think that sometimes there's um, bridge jobs that are taken. And I know back in the 2008, 2009, when so many of our business aviation departments downsized, a lot of folks took what we would call a bridge job, something that um, maybe was not at the level that they were, but it allowed them to stay in place and be ready and nimble for when business aviation came back, which of course it did. Jennifer? Sure. Since our primary business is uh, contracted labor to corporations, is that we're getting furloughed and even full-time contractors calling and you know, wanting to make sure that their credentials and their information is up to date because they they do want to fly contract. And we get that in a healthy economy where, like Cheryl said, is that people want to fly contract on the side. They have the time. So I think they're just making sure, but they also know that nobody's flying. In conclusion, Jennifer, what's your read on the overall mood in our industry right now? I think that what we are hearing from the crew members and clients that we talk to is that that despite the difficulties and some of the painful situations of furloughing and laying off that are happening, there still is a lot of optimism that uh, when we do come back, we're going to come back strong. And so not really getting, you know, people that feel like it's all over, you know, um, for business aviation. And, and again, they're just very optimistic about the future. Cheryl? I would totally agree with Jennifer. I think there's a lot of optimism, but it's a very painful time. And I think one of the things I would say is, especially for those who are in either a permanent or a temporary uh, job loss, is to keep yourself engaged, not only engaged in our industry, but keep yourself engaged in something that feeds you and feeds your soul. Going out and trying to do volunteer work or something rather than just staying home, looking at job boards that are really not being populated right now. I think when we come back, you're going to see a lot of pent up demand. Uh, But right now, there's not a lot of new things coming into the employment market. And so do something to keep your energy and keep your your positivity up. While we may tend to focus on the effects from this pandemic on pilots and cabin crew members, of course, all jobs across our industry, including schedulers and dispatchers and other support personnel, aircraft maintenance and electronics technicians, and tax policy, insurance, and administrative professionals have been impacted by COVID-19. If you've been affected by this crisis, there are many resources out there to help business aviation professionals plan their next career move, including Cheryl's and Jennifer's companies. I'd also encourage you to check out the NBAA Jobs Board at jobs.nbaa.org. And that's the latest from the National Business Aviation Association. Remember, you can subscribe to all Flight Plan episodes at Apple Podcasts in the App Store. 
wherever you find your favorite podcasts or download them from nbaa.org. I'm Rob Finfrock, and thanks for listening to Flight Plan.